Hello, this is Cecil Sunk here. I have a lot of topics I want to go over about micro, and in order to get them all into a short video, I gotta hook, go ahead and dive in right away. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is some Blink Stalker micro. There's a couple of different things you can do with Blink Stalkers in your Blink Stalker versus Blink Stalker micro. You can blink them back so they don't die, and you can blink them forward to pick other Blink Stalkers off that are weak, and also you can use them to block the padding of your opponent's units. And I'll go ahead and go through all of those with an example. Now to set the the context of this battle, he has a couple more stalkers to me because he gained an advantage in the early game. So I want to go ahead and talk about this, uh, this engagement right here. He has one more stalker than me and another sentry than I do. Right when the engagement starts, I have a concave. All his units are traveling in a line up this ramp towards my uh, my more spread out stalkers. And the reason this is beneficial for me because all my stalkers are immediately in the fight while only about this portion of his stalkers will be firing. Additionally, this portion of his stalkers, and soon to be all of them, will be firing at my very inexpensive zealot while my stalker group are all going to be firing at very expensive stalkers. So here the battle goes. My stalkers are firing onto his expensive units and he overkilled on my zealot. Uh, I'll go ahead and explain overkill in more detail later, as that really heavily applies to foregate versus foregate. For now, I'll just go over a blink stalker micro. Now you can see the blinking backwards. That's just to keep as many of your units in your army alive as long as possible, because the longer they alive, they are alive, the longer they can fire at the enemy and injure the enemy. So now, due to my concave, my superior concave, and him firing at my inexpensive zealots. I am able to effectively get a three stalker, uh, a three stalker lead on this guy, and I'll go and I'll go ahead and rewind just a moment to explain this point. It's also very important to know exactly when to blink forward in uh, any time you're using blink. Blinking your units back to keep them alive is not the only type of blink micro you can do. There's also the very important blinking forward. Basically, you usually blink forward whenever the opponent's on the retreat to pick units off. Now here, my opponent is on the retreat, and I have these two units, which are both very weak, and they both have cooldown going on blink, so we can't use a preemptive blink right now. Although I can go ahead and pick both of these stalkers off if I have good micro. And here you can see I blink forward, and I get a free stalker kill. Absolutely free stalker kill. And I also just now focused on a weak stalker. The idea in blink versus blink battles is to kill the, as many enemy stalkers as you fast as as many of the enemy stalkers as fast as you can. The reason you want to kill them, not only just deal overall damage to the army, is because every stalker that, of the opponents that dies is less damage that'll be being dealt to your army. So you want to keep as many of, of yours alive as long as possible, and you want to kill as many of the opponents as fast as you can. So actually, what I don't see very many people doing is multi-select. Uh, your um, multi-boxing, I think I should call it. Multi-boxing your army to pick groups of stalkers off. Most people just box their whole army and right-click on one of these stalkers and just overkill it and completely annihilate it. That is a good way to one-shot all these stalkers in this opponent's group, but it's more efficient if you gather them up and then right-click with two separate groups, because then you won't have as many shots fired that don't deal any damage, because less shots could have killed the unit. That's called overkill. You have less overkill if you're multi-boxing your units. It's extremely important in 4-gate versus 4-gate to multi-box your units, and I'll go ahead and show that later on in the unit tester. But right now I'm focusing on blinking forward. Take a look here. He has three very injured stalkers, now he has two very injured stalkers in the back. Now he has three very injured stalkers in the back. I can't really get to them currently. So what do you do to get to those ones in the back? You go ahead and take some of your very healthy stalkers, blink them forward, pick them all off. Now right there, I just picked off four enemy stalkers, and I lost one. So that blink forward forward was absolutely critical for me to win this battle. Now I have a three stalker lead, because of that move. Now I still have a three stalker lead. Uh, now have a five stalker lead. And as you can see, as the numbers of stalkers dwindle, a very small two stalker advantage will very easily turn into all of a sudden a six stalker advantage. And as an example here, I have a five stalker lead. 
and I started out with a deficit of, I think, two. And now there's one more thing I want to show in this replay, very quickly. Near the end of the battle, he has his wall of stalkers right here. And I have my army right here of speed zealots and stalkers. My speed zealots are going to slam into his army. But what is really clever that I do is, I notice he's blinking his stalkers back to keep them from dying, as the speed zealots are just wailing on them. And I take advantage of that by running up with my blink stalkers and blinking behind his entire army. And what that does is it prevents him from retreating. And if he does try to retreat, I just chase him with blink stalkers and pick things off for free. And if he doesn't try to retreat, then my speed zealots are just going to wail on him. And you can see right here, speed zealots slam into him. And now, he starts blinking stuff back. And what I do is I go ahead and just run up to the side and blink behind his army. Now I have his whole army surrounded with half of his blink stalkers being wailed on by speed zealots, which deal much more DPS when you're actually hitting the enemy than stalkers do. And there's really nothing you can do. My blink stalkers can chase him to death. My speed zealots are going to always catch up, deal extra DPS, and he just goes ahead to good games because all these guys are just slamming into them, just wailing on him. And the clever thing I did was I blinked behind his army. Now I'm going to go ahead and load up the unit tester and show you guys some cool stuff in the unit tester. The uh, unit test map. The single player one. Unit tester. Unit tester. Unit test map. Here it is. First thing I want to show you is how great force fields are. Uh, I think it's going to be really good to show you how to use proper force field usage in a PBT scenario. Go ahead and get a couple of mortals, some zealots, a lot of those sentries, and then a big vial ball with stim, clash them together, and then I'll go ahead and show you the differences between no force field usage and proper force field usage. And I gotta get things set up real quick. Uh, I need eight sentries. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these off to the side so that they can gather energy. The idea behind using force fields is to get as many of the opponent's units out of the battle as possible. That is the most important thing about using force fields. That's the whole point every single time you get into an engagement and you're using force fields. It's, to just, it's just simply to keep the opponent out of the battle. And I'm going to go ahead and get my bio ball going. And I've done this before a few times, so I know about the amount so I can get like a standardized amount of bio out every time. Yeah, this is about the size of the viable. Those racks are rallied into a retarded location. It's about it down there. This better be good. And there's my viable, and here is my Protoss ball. Now, these sentries are low on energy, but that's fine because I'm only going to use them. Guardian Chill, this is just so that I can demonstrate what this battle will turn out like. Uh, oh, I need four more. One, two, three, four. This will show what the battle will turn out like if all I do is Guardian Shield and I don't even use force fields. I'm going to wait for these four marines, I'm going to go ahead and stim at this army and Guardian Shield at the other one. Alright, Guardian Shield go, and stim go. I'm not even going to really micro uh, these units. Look at the absolute decimation. I'll go ahead and do the second stim. I have so much stuff left over. Just that—that that was a very one-sided battle, as you should be able to easily tell. All right, now these sentries are just chilling out, um, getting more energy. I'll recreate this Protoss army, except this time, I'll try to utilize some force fields and show you how to properly do that to get a good advantage during the battle. Go go go! Oh, it's on. And then a one Six zealots. All right, and here's my super imbalanced bio ball. Oh, it's not actually balanced. And now these sentries have accumulated some energy, and I will actually use them to force field shit. Uh, stuff. You didn't hear that from me. Oh, let me check the marine count. I actually got a couple of too many marines. Go, That's kill your right. brethren. Alright. So now take a look at this battle when I utilize some proper force field usage. I'm gonna go ahead and Guardian Shield in. Stim in.
Alright, and now look at how bit different that battle was. I'll go ahead and try to quickly explain why that battle was so different. Basically what you do with force fields is you're going to go ahead and as the Terran... Actually, I should probably get my handy dandy drawing program out for this. Do do Drawing program. Okay, so here is my Protoss army and here is my Terran army. As the Terran bio ball gets about here, I'm going to go ahead and throw force fields down just like that. I want to get about 60% eh, of 60-75% of the Terran army back here. And this is just going to be wailed on by Zealots and the rest of my army will be raining down fire. And of course you're going to have your Guardian Shield up. Now what you do with the rest of your force fields is you're actually going to place them sort of like this. And what this will do is it'll trap a bunch of Terran units in between the force fields, which you can very easily pick off because they're isolated, but most importantly is it pushes Terran bio back here, back here, back here, while your Protoss army is just like here, firing at these units, and these units, and these units, and these units. And all of these back here are just out of the battle, not dealing any damage. And what I said originally is the point of your forest fields is to try to get as many of the opponent's units out of the battle as you possibly can. Okay, and now I'm going to show you what I did after I laid the force field thing down. I have my force fields here, there's a bunch of Terran units trapped in it, and I have my army right there. Now what I did later in the battle is I laid down some force fields over here. And the Terran army was kind of like meandering around the side, uh, Terran army kind of meandering around the side, and they were in range of shooting these units here. So what I did was I pulled my army in this direction and placed it right here. And then I was able to shoot isolated Terran units that were still trapped around back here. Once these were killed, the rest of the Terran army that was um, in this direction, I force fielded it again, isolated them, and picked them off. So basically, as I said at the very beginning, the whole point of using good force fields is to keep as many of the enemy units out of the battle as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same battle. Um, you want a piece of me, boy? One, two, three, four. Go ahead and do the same battle. Uh, try to show you one more time. Bam, 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 bam. And two immortals. Because immortals fucking rock. All right. You gonna give me orders? Here's my So it's up front, and mortals in back. I'm gonna clash these again and show you some good force field usage. Guardian shield up. Stim. Cut units in half. Push these Terran units out of here. Kill off some isolated Terran units. Now the battle is mine. That time I won even harder. 